Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm just in the lab now, that's why there's a lot of background noise. But I'm just giving a quick demonstration of how to calculate the line weaver Burke plot from the um, experimental data you have. So, if you recall from last week, we created two data sets. One was the standard curve of the um, nitrophosphate, which is the product of the enzyme reaction. So this is table one. And then we also collected the enzyme rate data, which was table two. So if you look here in my Excel spreadsheet, I've, I have the data here from table one which was the, um, the, we did a standard curve with these amounts of nitrophosphate, of so they're shown here. And then for these values, we calculate, we um, measured the absorption readings here. So here's the standard curve that we have. If we just to show you how I did this graph. So from this data here, if we click on one of the data points and we add a trend line and we choose it to be linear because we know it's linear and we choose the option to display the equation on the chart, then we get this equation. Okay? So when we do the enzyme assay later and we get an absorption reading from the enzyme assay, we can take that absorption reading here and read off the graph to give the micromole amount of the nitrophosphate. So we need this chart for later on when we're processing our data. So also, we did the enzyme assay, which was table two. Here in my spreadsheet is the data from table two. So we worked through the series of dilutions to dilute our initial stock to our final stock of substrate from which we generated the absorption readings. So these values here are shown in the table here. Okay? So the final concentrations of the nitrophenolphosphate were calculated here. So you've done that already. So for each of these, so for, for one, for one molar here, for 0.3 molar here, for these amounts of substrate, we did an enzyme assay, a time course enzyme assay. All right, so from these five dilutions of substrate, you collected your absorption readings. Okay, so we have five sets of absorption readings. We then plot those data points on a curve using a scatter plot. So effectively um, this is the data from this and here is the data here from no so you can see where this data comes from. It's simply plotting the, the, the results we have from the enzyme assay. Once you have the scatter plot showing the points so I take my data points and I calculate the trend line, but in this case we're doing a quadratic polynomial. Now the reason I know that is in the manual here it says to use a quadratic polynomial to calculate your trend line. So this is polynomial, leave that set at 2 with the options here. Just um, display the equation on the chart and that will give you this line, which is now shown in black because I've just recalculated it, and it gives you this equation. That equation is this equation here. All right. So I've done this prior. So I, for each of my sets of data points, I've done the quadratic polynomial. I've got this equation, which fits this equation here, y equals mx squared plus bx plus c. y equals mx squared plus bx plus c. And it says here that b is the initial rate. All right, so b, this value, 
space, excuse me. This value here is the initial right. So this is table three. So I've calculated table three in my spreadsheet. And the first thing I've done, I've taken the 1.993 and I've put that value in my table. I've taken 1.83 and I put that value in my table. So here are my initial rates of enzyme activity calculated from this graph. These rates, the, the, the units of this is absorption because it's an absorption reading per minute. Okay, so I, oh, I should also point out that I, I plotted my graph, I don't know if it makes a difference, but I plotted my graph in minutes, not seconds. Okay, so I took my second values here and converted them to minutes and then plotted minutes against absorption. So I've got these values. I then want to convert absorption into amount of substrate or amount of product. So to do that, absorption value to amount, that takes us back to our standard curve. Absorption to absorption through to amount. So this is the standard curve we did earlier. So to calculate absorption to amount, I draw a line from here to here, and then I drop the line down to give me my amounts. Because I'm in Excel, I can't physically draw a line, so I use this equation. So y is the y-axis, which is absorption, is related to the x, which is my amounts, my x-axis, by this simple equation. So effectively, if I take 0.4, I can rearrange this equation to calculate x. So here's the equation here, taken from here, and then we just rearrange it to give, give it in the form of x equals. From my standard curve, I've taken the y equals mx plus c values from that other graph. I've copied them in here, and then I've used a calculation, which is this calculation, which is exactly the same as this equation here. It's just something plus something divided by something. So absorption plus something divided by something. And these are the somethings here. Okay. So from that standard curve, I've converted my absorption reading here into an amount, which is micromoles of nitrophosphate. I've then multiplied by 10 as indicated here because we did a standard curve in 150 microliters. We did our enzyme assay in 1.5 milliliters. It's a tenfold difference. So to convert 150 microliters into 1.5 milliliters, you times it by 10. So this equals, this equals that value times 10. I then converted that value, which is a molar, um, micromolar amount, into a molar amount by timesing it by 10 to the 6, minus 6. And I then times that value by 4 to give me the rate per mil, because times by 4, because this was 0.25 mils, this was needs to be calculated per mil. Now, if you remember the enzyme assay, you added 0.25 mils into your enzyme assay, so we want to calculate it per mil, so that's why we times by four. So think back to what we did in the test tubes last week. So table three is simply this table here, and all of those manipulations are described here. So you times by 10, you then change it from uh, micromolar to molar, and then you multiply by four, which is the same as dividing by 0.25, to give you the enzyme rate V, which is the enzyme rate V here. Okay, so from these initial rates of the enzyme and these concentrations of substrate, that's the data we need to do the line weaver Burt plot. So here you can see I've taken the um, these values here and just copied them over here. 
So these values here, and uh, we know how much substrate we had. I converted the millimolar into molar by simply um, dividing it by a thousand. I then took the inverse of this to give these values because the line with a burp plot is an inverse substrate versus inverse rate. So here's my inverse substrate, here's my rate. The inverse of that is that. So you can see here I've just taken the inverse of that square. So here's my inverse rate versus inverse substrate concentrations to get the line with a burp plot here. Again, I've added a data point for my own sake because I don't have time to print this out and extend this line down to the x value, the x axis here. So from this line with a Burke plot, the x intercept and the y intercept, from these two values, you can calculate the Km and Vmax according to this relationship we're given in the manual. Okay? So your x intercept equals minus 1 on the km value. So your x-intercept here, which I've calculated using this equation, is about minus 3,500. I take the minus 1 on that value, minus you know, 3,500, I get this value, which is the km in molar, the y-intercept, which again I've calculated from the line, is 1 on the Vmax. So this is the, um, the y-intercept, it's just the c from y equals mx plus c. If I take that value and I just do the inverse of it, so equals 1 divided by, then that's the... Um, the one on, that, that's the actual the Vmax value. Okay, so from these graphs, you can process your data to calculate the um, the, K, the Km and the Vmax, which are important properties when considering the um, properties of the enzyme. So if you go back to your introductory notes from last week, there's a nice discussion here on measuring the reaction rates and there's also these are the rates of reaction that we've calculated and then it talks about um, plotting the um, the line we've a Burke plot here and then calculating the km and the vmax from these data okay so you've got the background information there to understand what you're doing this is just my interpretation of processing the data from tables 1 and 2 so that you can um, work through the last week of the prac to process the data for table 3 and to process the data for table 4, which is in here somewhere as well, table 4. Okay, so have a go at that yourself. Okay, I hope that helps with your calculations for this week's prac.